Well, g'day guys and welcome to episode 4 of our 100 Frigates Project. Look, I know it's been a long time between drinks, so I apologise for that. Hey, huge thanks also to the people who've reached out in the comments just to check uh, up on me. It's been a couple of months, but yeah, look, had I stopped playing EVE? Absolutely not. In fact, for the first part of that time, I was playing much more EVE than I ever had, trying to defend my home system, Fliette, from being taken over and after that I put so much energy into it that I just really needed a little bit of a break um, but we're back and uh, we're going to look today at the first 10 seconds of a frigate fight because really that's where a lot of the time a frigate fight can be won or lost. There's a few things you can do in that first 10 seconds including your positioning, getting your DPS on so let's have a look at what you can do to maximize that first 10 seconds. So as with previous episodes, we are flying a Brawler Merlin. Slow, high, very short range damage, and our goal is to try and get a Warp Scrambler on the enemy as they come into this Faction Warfare Complex. So as they land at this beacon, they'll come in from this point, from the Acceleration Gate, land at this beacon. We want to get a Warp Scrambler on them, stop their Micro Warp Drives, and get in close and hopefully deal a heap of damage before they can uh, pull too much range on us. So we're sitting on our beacon, we're orbiting at about 500 meters, nice and close. Firing off the D-scan, waiting to see if something pops up at the activation gate, which I can see now an Atron has shown up. So potentially, I may have a fight coming up here. So what a lot of people tend to do now is pre-activate their weapons by clicking on my guns, my scram, my web, and you can see they're blinking, which means they're pre-activated. So as soon as I lock the, uh, the target, they'll instantly apply. Now we're going to see that that actually causes a problem in a moment. So I'm going to hold down control, and as soon as my target lands, I'm going to click on him on the overview, and there he comes. So if I hold control, click, you'll see that the first lock fails, and my pre-activated guns are no longer pre-activated. Everything's turned off now because of the failed lock. And I continue to try, but I'm getting this target is invulnerable message. Because in a faction warfare complex, for the first 8 to 10 seconds, when a target lands, if they don't do anything, if they don't move at all, they're actually invulnerable. So the, the lock fails and my pre-activation fails. So I've lost all of that advantage of trying to be ready to go. So what can I do in that first eight to 10 seconds that does give me some advantage? Well, there are two things that are critical in a frigate fight is getting the DPS on first and early and positioning. Now, thankfully we can do something about the positioning even whilst our target is invulnerable. Now this time around, instead of pre-activating our weapons, I've preheat our afterburner by sh hitting shift click and you'll see it's it's not on but it's ready to run at its overheated state to give me the maximum speed boost when I need it. Now the other thing that I've done is I've pressed the W key and you'll see my little orbit uh, message here has changed from instead of saying orbiting the beacon which I'm still doing I'm ready now to pre-click on something that I want to orbit. So here's the plan when the enemy lands, I can't do anything about locking them up until they move and become out of their invulnerable state, but I can position right from the very get-go. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to orbit them as soon as they land. So I'm holding down W to preset my orbit, and as soon as they land, I'm going to click on them, and we'll start to orbit them. Now let's have a look at it in action. First time we'll do it just at normal speed, and then we'll go through and just break it down step by step and what actually happened. All right, I know that all happened pretty quick, so let's break it down. First things first, I've preheated, shift clicked my afterburner, so I'm ready to accelerate as fast as I can. I'm holding down my W button, so my orbit, I'm ready to pre-select something I want to orbit, waiting for my target to arrive on the overview. And there he is. Now I've instantly clicked on him whilst holding down W, and you'll see my Orbit message says, I'm no longer orbiting the beacon, I'm now orbiting my target here, the Desperatron, at 500 meters. Even though I can look at the overview, he's still 800 odd kilometers off, he's still coming into the gate, but I've pre-set up the orbit command. So having set up that command, I've clicked on my afterburner, you'll see that it's now active, overheated and active, so I'm actively burning towards my target. And uh, I've tried to initiate that initial lock, but it still failed because he's invulnerable. In fact, you can see he's only still just sliding into the beacon right now. So despite having our positioning set up, which was one of the two things, remember we said positioning 
and getting your modules and your DPS on as early as possible were the critical factors. Well, we've done the first one. How can we set up for the second thing? How can we be ready to for our modules to apply the instant our target moves and comes out of this invulnerable state? Well, the answer to that is twofold. First of all, hotkeys. So my guns, my web, my scram are set but to the default module locations here, F1, F2, and F3 on my keyboard. We're going to need to use those. In fact, have our fingers hovering over those ready to go. The second thing is being able to see the little lock animation. So I'm going to pause here. You'll see every time the lock fails, that lock animation uh, stops and goes back to the start. Now you have to be careful not to spam it because it'll also go back to the start if you re-click it. So just with a bit of a cadence, click, pause, click, pause. And what we're looking for is for that animation to kick in, to start to go past that first couple of degrees and start to go right around the circle, which means the lock now is taking, the target is no longer invulnerable. And in that few seconds that I've got before that circle closes and the lock lands, I'm going to hit the hotkeys F1, F2, F3, and you'll see my modules will get pre-armed, and then instantly as the lock lands, those modules will apply, and that's the perfect timing. Let's have a look at it. And boom, we've got him, okay? Because our modules were pre-armed in that last few seconds, they instantly apply to the target. So our web scram and guns are on the target. We're orbiting at our optimal range already. So we've set ourselves up the best that we can for the first few seconds of this fight. Our positioning and our DPS, uh, those two most important things for the start of a fight at least, uh, we couldn't have done any better than that. So let's now take it out and actually uh, pick a real fight with uh, someone and just see how we go with it. Right, so we're sitting in a novice outpost here in Haderley. It's never a great idea, although I'm pretty sure it won't take us long before we do get a fight. In fact, you're seeing a D-scan there now. We've got a Daredevil. Now, at this point, you would not normally take this fight. You would normally go from this. The Daredevil will have um, bonuses that will allow it to pull range on us, dictate range. Uh, basically, we, we won't be able to hit it, and it will um, wipe the floor with us. Um, but look, for the purposes of the video, we're going to take whatever comes in. Everything's preheated, including my weapons and my web, my afterburner, I'm ready to apply. I'm just going to let it run at real time, and then we'll go through and break it down. Drive active. Okay, so let's review that, replay it, we'll pause in a few places and just break down what we did well, what we did wrong. First thing we did wrong was probably not running from this fight. But that's just something that comes from practice. Taking fights, that's what the whole 100 Frigates project is about. Things we did well, uh, I can see here we're already orbiting this ship which is called Triple X. Um, and it's still sliding in, so our setup was good. We've got our positioning right. Everything's preheated in our modules. So in terms of what we could do at this point, now that we're committed to the fight, so far so good. Now, one error here is I realized I can't see the lock animation on the target, so I should have clicked on uh, the target so that I could see it. I'm going by ear. I'm listening for it to connect. So I don't know when it actually connects. So that's something I should have done better. Right, despite that error, I was able to listen and hear uh, in time to pre-arm my modules so that as soon as the lock landed, I managed to get them on. But it would have been easier to see it. Now, ordinarily, in a well-matched fight, in terms of ship types, we're not too badly off here. We've done reasonably well. We've got our web scram guns on. We're sort of close to our optimal range. We maybe need to get a little bit closer. But we've done everything we can 
for the setup. Now we're just going to sort of manage our overheating. But you'll see in a moment, this Daredevil, uh, because of its bonuses, just pulls range on us outside of our gun range. There's nothing we can do to put damage on him, uh, yet he can sit at a range where he's doing damage to us. Now, seeing the Daredevil pull range on me a few seconds ago, I instantly think, well, what's anything I could do? Well, I'm going to try and change my ammo from short range void to longer range null, but I'm too slow. He's already pulled well outside of a range where even null would be of any help here. So, kind of futile, but hey, in this instance, you've got to try and do what you can. Right, in another example of too little too late, I start looking around to see if there's something I could align to to try and get off, but there's no way I could do that because he's got such a, a dominant position in terms of range control on me. Like, his, his web bonuses have slowed me down so much. Nothing I can really do. But these are the things that go through your head. You're like, okay, can I? Look, is there something I can align to maybe pull some range out of here? At least one last little positive, we have our overview tab set up for us to uh, instantly warp off so we don't lose our pod. Right, one last thing we can do after a, a fight, particularly one we've lost, is go back and maybe see if we can get some intel or some ideas about what happened with the pilot and our ship. So this guy's obviously very experienced, lots of kills, quite a lot of solo kills. In fact, he's recently lost a daredevil, so let's just have a look and see what kind of modules and fittings might have been on that Daredevil to help get an idea of you know, what happened in that fight. And so looking at it, we can see look, experienced pilot and a very expensive, kind of very sort of souped up, I guess, uh, Daredevil. He's got abyssal afterburners, abyssal rolled webs, uh, abyssal ancillary armor wrappers. So this was an expensive, well-fit, specialized kind of Daredevil. And the Daredevil has bonuses to web uh, effectiveness so he, he basically applied those webs to us would have slowed us right down to a point where he could just manage uh his range we had no hope but like we said we were going to take the fight anyway so hopefully there was something there that helped you to set up in those first few seconds of any frigate fight particularly in a faction warfare complex your positioning uh, and, and how you can use the timing of that lock animation to be ready to pre-arm your modules to give yourself the best chance of winning. Hey, it's great to be back with you guys. Um, I've, I've definitely missed doing this, so looking forward to many more um, explosions and, and killing many more frigates and exploring this incredible and amazing, beautiful, wonderful game that is EVE Online. Good job. Well done.